edges are kind of like weight loss but in reverse weight loss it takes like a split second to gain it and forever to lose it edges takes a split second to lose them and forever to gain them back not every african can braid y'all I was one of those Africans. Three years ago, I finally started to get a handle of cornrows. Now I can. Now I can actually do box braids without the assistance of rubber bands and all that stuff. Now I can actually do these styles comfortably and confidently. But before that, I couldn't. And how I achieved styles like the brush braids, halo braids, and any other type of style, even the cornrow look, I achieved those looks by using African threading. All right, I'm gonna try to walk you through this as best as I can and point out some of the things that I feel need an explanation. As far as the sizes of your sections, y'all, it's up to you how big or small you want it to be. This is me trying my best to preserve my edges, my quote unquote baby hairs, okay? You don't want any tension because once they're gone, they're gone. It's gonna take forever to get them back. My yarn, I would suggest if you're starting to just do arm's length, that way you don't get tangled. I've been doing this for a long time, so I can go as long as I want to. I suggest threading your base two to three times. This way you just make sure that there's not gonna be any unraveling. It'll give you a firm, steady, solid foundation okay after that you can then start just threading down your hair strands and you just saw that right you never want your hair to be too tight y'all just hold it firmly that's all you gotta do it's gonna be neat okay never too tight ever now what you see here is me trying to measure and see if I'm threaded enough to get to the next section. Believe it or not, I am doing this without a mirror in front of me. I do have the screen for my camera, but it's super small and I can't see it if I'm looking in the other direction. And there's that mirror all the way back in the back, but I'm as blind as they come, y'all. I cannot see that far back. So this helps me, and if you ever just like want to do your hair while you're sitting and watching TV, it's a good way of measuring whether or not you've threaded enough making this knot guys never make this knot too tight because then it'll be hard to unravel and you might have to like d don't get in a situation where you have to cut off your hair just don't do it okay just make it like again never tight just firm okay Y'all saw what I just did, right? I'm gonna do it again. This time I'll explain it, <laughs> okay? Now, I just took that section. What we're gonna do is split the new section into two. We'll bring the old section down the middle. We're gonna put all the hair in one hand and have the yarn in the other. I'm just switching my hands because I'm right-handed and I need my right hand to thread. Keeping a firm grip at the base, we're gonna thread two to three times, sometimes four, depending on how firm you want your base to be or how confident you are in the foundation of your base. And then, once you're satisfied, start threading downward. Now, in this situation right here, I ran out of thread. Not to worry, I'm gonna show you what to do if you run out of thread, but look at how cute and neat that is. And I don't even have a mirror skills. <laughs> don't hate. Anyway, I just took a new um, strand of yarn and literally just tied a knot, that's how easy it is. It's not complicated, this is the easiest style ever. And then just continue threading downwards. Um, and I'm gonna show you a trick to make sure that those little flyaways, you know, get hidden. Just lay them parallel to your hair strands and thread them in just as if you're threading your hair. 
That way you're not going to have any yarn sticking out and looking crazy. Because we don't want to look crazy. We want to look cute and chic, right? Or at least protect our hair. You could do this. Just to wear it like this out in public or wear it under your wig, under a hat, under a turban. Whatever you want to do with your hair. So here we are. Now I'm over here going to my last sections and doing the exact same thing. So I'm going to hush and let you watch. As you can see with this last section, I threaded it all the way down to the end or split ends of my hair because I do need a trim, I'm not going to lie. But I threaded it all the way down. At this point, you could tuck it in, you could thread them all together. It's up to you what you want to do. Tie them in a bun or whatever. It's up to you. Now I'm going to show you guys how I'm unraveling. And it's so simple, so easy. It's not that complicated. I know someone was going to ask me. So just undo it that's why remember when I said do not make that knot too tight it'll be too hard to take that thread off your hair and it will be so hard that's just proof right there that I don't make my knots too tight it just came out remember now on this one I think I had a little bit of trouble but I got it out I got it out <laughs> That's it. Pretty simple, right? All you need to remember when it comes to African threading, guys, is never, the word tight needs to come out of your vocabulary immediately. Immediately. The moment, actually, the moment you touch your hair, just never want tight hair, okay? Go for firm and neat. Always hold your hair firmly, but never tight. When you feel that your strands are being pulled too tight, release, start over. Because the moment you break your hair off, now it's an uphill battle to get that health back. Um, take your time, use your fingers to guide you because sometimes, you know, as you're going down, as you can see me cornrowing, just always try to stay at the tip of your finger as you go down. That way it's gonna guide your strand and you'll have like a nice coil looking situation instead of like your thread is like making huge gaps, unless that's the look you're going for. I don't know why you would, but any other tips are if you want it to be neater or sleeker, you could use gel or edge control paste products, pomades. Those will help your hair get sleek. Also, that will help with flyaways. Always, if this is a style that you're going to do to keep it for a long time, hydrate your hair, moisturize your hair, and seal your hair, okay? If you're going to use it as a protective style, I have so many videos that I've done African threading. I've talked about African threading and how I take care of my hair and why I choose it. They're all linked below. I have a whole playlist. I'll link it down below. You can watch those videos and you can get ideas of some of the styles. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> some of the styles um, I have created and, and I also will be creating new looks for you guys to play with. Try on your head of hair. It's, it's fun. I, I really love African threading. We call it Mabanzi where I come from. That language is Shona. I'm from Zimbabwe. I'm Zimbabwean. So that's Mabanzi. I did cover the basics. Firm, not tight. Moisturize, hydrate your hair. Make sure you seal it in if you're going to wear it for a long time. Or even if you're just styling it for a day, just make sure that your hair is moisturized. You never want to work on dry hair. Just don't do it. Edges. You saw me in my video pulling them forward. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Even if you don't use stuff like edge tamers or sleek them down, even if you don't do that, just leave your edges alone. Just walk around with your fuzzy edges. That's fine too, because that's a look I walk. I walk around with fuzzy edges. I do it. Um, I, I think this year is the year I've used edge tamer a lot. Before, anybody got time? Mm -hmm.